Is this thing on? Hello? Is it on? Is it on? Hey, Belinda. Hey, Angie. Do you remember that time Mel traumatized Kirsch? Which time? All the times? Fair. Why don't we go ahead and relive that trauma right now? <laughs> yes, let's. Please welcome to the stage, Matt O'Connor. <laughs> Nicole Stamp. And we love her. We love Danny Sharon Bell. Yeah. All right. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? Hello. How's CarmillaCon going for y'all? It's a blast. Share? No, no, it's fine. I, just did, I didn't know if I was sitting on it badly. You're sharing. Like, Am I sitting on it? <laughs> <laughs> we got the puns. We got you like that. <laughs> how's it going, guys? How's how's CarmillaCon? Uh, it's going pretty awesome. Just get to hang out in a hotel with a bunch of really nice people. It's like the best. <laughs> it's been amazing. It's been so awesome meeting everybody. I'm so into this fandom. It's just the best. And you already answered. Yeah, I said it was a blast. Yeah, it's, it's a blast. It's a blast. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Glad you're having a good time. So first up, a uh, question is for all of you. What did you think of your character when you first read the breakdown for the part? And then what did you learn later on that kind of surprised you, learning you know, through the years? Uh, well, when I first read the breakdown for Danny, I kind of just thought she was, uh, kind of just thought she was just like your typical, like, basic jock kind of character. Um, and then as, uh, you know, the story evolved, I was like, she's just, she's just she's a big softie on the inside, which, uh, yeah, I, I really related with. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I learned. Um, I would say, I've said this already to some people this weekend, but from the the little tiny bit of script that I received as my audition for Kirsch, it was um, the scene where he offers um, Stout and the thing about the bail. It's the first scene, so there, there was, that's all there was to go off of. And so at first I was like, what? <laughs> first of all, what is this? Who is this guy? Um, and so happy to see when you finally get to see, read the whole script and then you get to do the whole project, you see how much um, or at least I could see how my first reaction to who I thought this character was, just that first read, is very different to who he actually is and who he evolved into. Could, could I ask you what it was like to wear a shield of pads? This was in season zero. You had, yeah, and you oh, had like tampons in your ears. That was fun. And... <laughs> Listen, if you don't know already, I love being the butt of anyone's joke. Like, dress me up, you know, torture me. Like, that's, that's why we're all here. Uh, so, um, to torture me, that's why they're here, too. Um, so, yeah, I, I have a great time. I'll dress up in anything, anything you want. Um, when I got the, so when I got the audition, my agent was like, oh, you've been requested for this specific thing. Like, they, they came looking for you, and I was like, oh, I've never heard of this, and I opened it up, and it was like, Carmilla, a web series directed by Spencer, maybe, and I was like, I'm in. Because um, I had met Spencer before, and we'd gotten along really well, and so I think when he read the Mel breakdown, he was like, oh. Um, so I was like, I'm going to get this part. Like, this is, I'm going to do this. Uh, so my sides for the audition were the Adonis Hunt moment where I have the bow and arrow trained on you, and then you come and grab the arrow. And so I watched the show, and I also didn't know that it was a queer web series, so I'm watching it, and I'm like, are they? <laughs> is this? Because it's a little, oh. Oh. Oh, they are. Um, so I was like super excited, and you, I didn't really know what. Like I didn't read any of the rest of season two, so I didn't know what the Adonis Hunt was. I knew that it was like had a sort of occult vampire kind of vibe, but I took it as like um, I had a whole backstory for Mel to make the audition make sense to me, and it was really intense. 
I was like, she's this like feminist warrior crusader who's getting all the men back for all the like Me Too events that have happened on campus, and she's using like like pagan magic, the Adonis Hunt, to like to get the men back. So I was like that that scene where I say to you like, how many of us have they? Um, hurt how many so I like I like went very serious on that <laughs> and then they were like it's not quite that <laughs> you can just like 10% just pull that back a little bit because I was like doing a whole thing and I was like you know what no Mel stands by that that is that is how it is for Mel um, so I I came out like I woke up I remember like I woke up early that morning I did like calisthenics before my audition I was like wearing like full spandex like I was very I had a I had made a bow and arrow I was very intense um, and in my audition Sophia was there too reading for Maddie and we sort of knew each other so we had a little like hey hey and then <laughs> and I went in and I was like like I did the you know the classic Mel like sits on the back of the chair thing where it's like she doesn't she doesn't understand that this is the part of the chair that you sit on so in my audition I like leap onto a chair and I have my bow and arrow and I was just talking to Annie and she was like because she was in my audition and she was like your audition was like really intense <laughs> I was like yeah. Um, so that was my impression was I was just like, oh, I want to go deep for this character. Like, I want to go like super hard for it and make a big, like, I want her to be like, I want her to be intense. So it was really fun to like get it and then come on board and be like, oh, the whole show is intense in like all these different ways. It was a real pleasure. And uh, so did five years, we're five years from the start of Carmilla airing, I guess, a little over that. Did you think that we would be sitting here? Like, when no. did the show end? Like two years ago? And we're sitting here on stage? With all of these yeah. fans, like, how, how does that how does that feel to be part of something that has res resonated so much with so many people? Uh, there should be words, but it's like there are no words to describe how incredible this feels. Um, as you all know, you've seen it uh, a couple times, probably like season one. You know, we definitely did not imagine that we would be here when we were shooting that. Um, and uh, it's, it's quite overwhelming, and I've had the chance to meet a number of you now, and uh, I traveled so far, and I feel like um, I don't know how to say thank you all enough for uh, your constant support and your investment in the show and these stories and these characters and reaching out in and, and moments like this and getting the chance to meet face to face. It's really incredible. So did I think that I would be sitting here? No, no, zero. Um, and so I'm really, really happy, and I feel very fortunate um, to be here in this moment, in this room with everyone. Um, I would not have imagined this at all. I remember Steph was like, she called me and she was like, we're going to announce you as part of the fandom tomorrow, so just go through your social media and make sure you're cool, because it's like basically you're going public tomorrow on this. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. I had like, I think I had like 30 followers on Twitter before. <laughs> <laughs> and that day, I just watched my follower. I was like, "You got a new bing, 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 bing." And I was like, "What is this?" And all this like like fan art started happening immediately. And I was just like, "What has happened? Like, what if I?" And then because we were shooting um, at the Darling Mansion, and people like figured out where what it was. Just like, what have I gotten into? This is so great. It was so cool. It was amazing to like meet all these people, see the impact the show has had. And the fact that people are so transparent and brave about sharing their stories online about the show and the characters helping people, individual people, like figure out your own identities and like be proud of who you are and come out to your families or not come out to your families, but come out to yourself. Um, it's a real privilege to be that, to, to have a role in something that plays that in people's lives because figuring out who you really are and embracing that is a really, tender, special thing that's really important to have a happy life. And so to be a part of a show that gives people, makes people feel like they have permission or helps them sort of frame their identity in a positive way, I'm so proud of it. It's so great. And I, I'm like so happy to, to be a part of that in people's lives. So yeah, it's like, I totally agree with you. Like, thank you. This is so special. It's so special. It's, it's so great. I'm like a little bit misty. <laughs> Here you take it. Yeah, I uh, obviously, yes, didn't expect this. Didn't expect it one bit. Um, but uh, I was just talking about uh, this convention last night with a couple people, um, just kind of like decompressing. And um, I just, it, it just kept coming up. And I, I was trying to like tell people who aren't part of this, 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 this fandom, I was trying to explain it. And, and 
I, I just kept being like, no, no, but like you don't get it. Like it's yes, no, 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 but they're 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 so amazing. Like this 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 thing is so amazing. Like there's just nothing like it. And and yeah, I feel so privileged to be able to help create this change and like be part of this wave in media. Um, and also, I'm just like dumping out like my bag of like art and stuff that people gave me and I was like I was like how can I not how can I not just feel so proud like 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 I I'm just I don't know, it's I'm just speechless it's I'm just so happy to be here yeah we're happy to have you here <laughs> Sharon, this is a question for you. Oh, no. <laughs> now that Danny is 100% over Laura, and that's not even a thing anymore. So over Laura. So over it. <laughs> Laura who? What do you think, when Danny's looking for a partner, what do you think are the characteristics she'd be looking for? Um, well, I think when we look for a partner, I think, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe, Maybe it's just me, but I'm. You're looking for someone who's kind of like you. I think you know, like someone who like shares common interests. Um, I think Laura was kind of, kind of just like caught her by surprise. Um, I think that was a real like fall in love by accident sort of thing. Because I can see Danny just like being into someone who's just like, we just want to like sit on the couch and like watch sports together. You know. <laughs> Go to the hockey game. Like, totally. Play softball together. Oh, we're so cute. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Be like a pitcher and a back catcher. That'd be so cute. <laughs> On the same team. Love L that. Laura, Laura likes drama too much for that. Sorry? I think Laura likes drama too much for that. Laura? Yeah, Laura. Not Danny. Laura. No, just to be chill yeah, watching yeah. a game. She oh. wants to be out like saving oh, the world yeah. kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'd prefer just to sit on the couch and watch sports, so. Sports, sports, sports. She's, she's married though, silence, sorry. Silence, silence. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Oh, oh, it's my turn. It um, is your turn. <laughs> Nicole. Yo. Um, so we discussed yesterday how you're a lesbian icon. <laughs> Thank you. Totally. Well, Mel is. Uh, probably Nicole, Nicole too. is too. I'm right here. <laughs> and it had something to do with a certain Bronte sister. So, uh, let's go there a little bit. In your head canon, has Mel gotten over Charlotte, or has she found a way to bring her back oh. from the afterlife? Wow. Okay, so in my head canon, Mel went straight to a bookstore, <laughs> bought every book by the Brontes and their contemporaries, and like scoured through to see if there were any characters based on Charlotte, if there were any, you know, just like Mel sort of wove together her own like Bronte backstory, just as research, right, as one does. Because um, you can't you can't stalk a Bronte on like their old you can't go through their Facebook you can't scroll back embarrassingly through their Instagram and hope your finger doesn't accidentally like one of their pictures from like July 2015. Um, so that's the that's Mel's version of backstalking her ex. And then I think Mel's a very pragmatic individual. So I feel like Mel like packaged that time up into what it was. After some wallowing, it's just like okay that happened. It was wonderful. Um, and I feel like Mel is like on the hunt, so to say. <laughs> nice. You know what I mean? Mel yeah. moves on. Mel keeps moving. So I don't think Mel's going to like sit in the past. I think, I think it was what it was, and uh, hopefully Charlotte went off to whatever's the, whatever the afterlife is for a Bronte sister. Hopefully she's there, you know, looking at, looking at all the other people in the afterlife and wondering if any of them have a crossbow stashed anywhere. <laughs> we There's only we one had. Gertrude. And right? Only one. There's only one Gertrude. I'm true to, I'm true to my trude. Uh, <laughs> Matt, this question's for you. So if you needed your own dude squirt from the Carmilla cast, who would you pick and why? If I, Matt, needed my own dude squirt? Yes. Someone to protect me? Correct. Well. <laughs> and you can only pick one. Why do you, why, I wanted her to sit here to protect me from that one over there. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, like, obviously, she carries knives and what, not in real life. I don't know what's under, what's under there. Um, but I would say that 
in a very, in a, in a way that's taking it away from even just the physical protection, any of these cast members here would be, would go to battle for me and each other and stand up for what's right. And so if ever I was in a situation where, you know, people were coming for me, I would take any of them and all of them because I know they'd stand right beside me and, and take care of their puppy. And I did the same. <laughs> All right, we have one more question before we move to something else. It's more questions in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> Who would win an arm wrestling match? Danny or Mel? Everyone has to answer. Like, longer limbs are better levers. I would have better leverage. She has better leverage than me. I mean, Danny would. I don't think you're as competitive as me. N I'm not. I don't think anyone's as competitive as me, really. I don't think so. I've won, I've won the competition for who's the most competitive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I will say this. I, not to give too much detail, I know one of the women's arm wrestling champions of Toronto and I have arm wrestled with her many times, and she thinks that I am a better arm wrestler than the person who came second to her. Well, there's your answer. Wow. I, I couldn't beat her, she's a beast. I could not beat her, uh, but she, I mean, maybe she was flirting. God, I hope she was flirting. <laughs> Is it warm in here? Um, anyway, I'll say that was said to me once, so I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just hold on to that really tightly for the cold nights. Okay, Mel wins. Mel wins, all right. Not competitive. All right. So now we're moving on to lightning round. We all got to answer, all got to be ready. Salty or sweet? Sweet. Salty. Uh, at the same time. That's not an answer. Salty, fine. But have you ever tried them at the same time? That's the best. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Cats. <laughs> Come on! Dogs. I have to You're see dogs. Dog. I know. Dogs. You have to. But I don't hate cats either. I don't hate them. People hate cats? Yeah, I, I know. I'm, Nobody I'm, in this room hates okay. cats. Nobody. <laughs> Bath or shower? Oh. Bath. Shower. Shower. You I like animal. to soak. <laughs> <laughs> So against baths. After a bath, if I have one, which is rare, I have to have a shower after. I feel gross. I feel like I just marinated in a broth of human flakes. Yes. <laughs> How do you follow that, Andy? I'm going to. Hot dog or taco? Taco. Uh, hot talk. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> like street meat hot dogs. Like get a street meat if you do eat meat and, and hot dogs, if you're into that. Get the street meat from around here, like the big sausages, corn relish, onion, sauerkraut, all that stuff. It's good, mustard. That's not a lightning round answer, sorry. No. <laughs> Tacos. <laughs> Alchemy Club or Glee Club? Glee. Glee. Glee's where they're happy and they sing? Not the Silas Glee. Not the but Silas yeah, Glee Not Club, Silas no. Glee. They weren't happy. They sang, but I don't they were think the, they were, were happy. They were the ones singing around the fish hole, right? I think they were mostly dead, Yeah, they were dead, kind of chanting. Fish hole. Fish hole. <laughs> oh, Sharon. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm not chanting around a fish hole, you guys. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> toilet paper, what? over or under? Oh. Under. <laughs> like on the toilet, the roll. toilet roll. Does it? Do you, do you <sighs> set it over or under? Or oh. do you not think about Man, it? Man, I don't even know. I've never thought about that. <laughs> you will now. Okay, but I'll think about it. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> over. I think over. Yeah. Over. 
okay, you keep thinking about it. Let's all sneak out when he closes his eyes again. <laughs> Just alone. Like. Ten minutes later, he's like, okay, okay, I'm ready, and it's empty. <laughs> Invisibility or super strength? Invisibility. Super. Strength. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm matching it again. Terrible at this. Uh, invisibility, please. Oh. iPhone or Android? Android. iPhone. iPhone. <laughs> what did you say? Baths? <laughs> Hold on one second. It's very much a lightning round. All right, go. Hold on. M&Ms or Smarties? Smarties. Uh, M&Ms. We had to bring Canadian Smarties for our American okay. Americans. Oh, they don't they think it's rockets. Right. Peanut M&Ms. You ever had that? That'll change your life. He doesn't know how to play the game. No, he don't. Does anyone here not know what Smarties are? Okay, so Smarties are kind of like the Canadian version of M&M's. They have a candy shell and they're milk chocolate inside. You can inside. have some after the panel. In my we have. opinion, <laughs> because they're made of Cadbury milk chocolate, it's like a sweet, more vanilla, like kind of British chocolate. It's like, I find uh, American, like Hershey's brand chocolate, like M&M's, has like a... Um, almost like a bit of a sour taste to it, but M like Smarties chocolate is like sweet and vanilla-y, so I prefer M uh, Smarties to M&M's by a lot. And I think that all of we the Americans should try a Smarty because yeah. I think they're great. If Smarties if like are better, yeah. infinitely, than m and I disagree, but I'm American, so. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, mine? Yep. Carmilla or Laura? Oh my God. Carmilla. I don't think you need to explain. Just leave it. I don't think so either. Yeah. <laughs> okay, are you asking as Nicole or as... I don't even want to... I don't it does, even it's not, a lightning round. You gonna, answer however you want. Look at me. Just answer the question. Yeah. Both. <laughs> you, you just pulled a mat and totally hedged that, but that's all right. I'll, I'll allow it. Laura. Aww. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do now... Don't mind me, I'm just going to strip a little bit. <laughs> right, you go. I don't know how to follow that. So, as you know, the Adonis, the Adonis panel, uh, sorry, the Adonis set happened, and it was poor Kirsch against all the Summers, yeah. and we need a rematch, and we need it to be even. So An Angie is going to be your honorary bro today, okay. and it's going to be Summers versus Zetas, and we're going to play Password. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're ready? Oh, the rules of password. There are no rules. No. That's cute. We're prepared. So, you're each going to get a word. So, one of you is going to be the giver and one will be the receiver. Take that how you will. And so, you're each going to have a word and you've got to get the person on your team to guess that word, saying only one word. And it, if you get it right, you get a point. If you don't, the other team gets to steal it. And we have first two, we have seven words. Whoever has the most at the end or when we run out of time. We're going to win. I think we got it. We got it? We're going to win. Zetas. Zetas. Boom. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Who's first? Who's? You have to pick that. Oh. Who wants to be the first? Yeah, go for it. All right. What? Oh, you're gonna get. You're gonna, gonna receive your word. Okay. You're gonna receive your word. Is it Look, the same it, word? It's the same word. No. Oh, I'll only, be buzzing. Only one, of us, only one of us can see the word, though, right? Oh, sorry. Yes. So who goes first? Be careful. Don't. Yeah. Who goes don't first? Do so I go first? You're gonna go first. Yeah. So we have to listen to okay. that because. Oh wait. Don't, and, and don't and, and don't show Nicole the word. And if you don't get it right, you'll hear. <laughs> Side tech. Sharon, you're up. I should look at the word. You should, Angie. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm thinking. Um, yeah, I'm messing with your head right now. Um, 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 um. The password is. Okay. Um. 
Deer. Hunt. So we're going for the same word. Yeah. This is now like second clue. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Horns. Antlers. Oh. Damn it. Doe. <laughs> Buck. Solo. Sorry, I'm trying to uh, yeah. trying from a different angle. Oh, here. I. I'm just thinking, Star Wars now. Uh, <laughs> wrong show. Okay. Wrong, wrong, wrong movie. Uh, oh, I am going to say something that's not right. Uh, you said Buck. I say Bambi. <laughs> Baths. Oh, stag. Because I, when I said buck and it wasn't buck, I knew what it was. But I was like, oh, just say a word. And then Sharon said bats, and I was like, wait, I don't know what it is anymore. But then she was like, I just said anything. Don't get too. It's very complicated to be over here. Sorry. This is not easy. Okay. The password stag and is. Dose. How did we not get stag that? Yeah, this was silly. Okay. 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 When you go solo, you go stag. Ah, you're right. Okay. No, it was a good one. Yeah. Who started? Oh, so you start this. I'll one. start. Yeah. I see the word, and now I'm gonna say my thing. Okay. <laughs> Arrow. <laughs> Bow. So it's the same word. Olympics. <laughs> I should say there's a Carmilla theme to the words ish. <laughs> Probably should have said that. Not that I think that will help you right now, but. <laughs> You don't know it. Oh my god. I don't know. <laughs> no. Oh, are you trash talking? Uh, I'm trash talking. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Game. I don't know. I don't know. I think I might know it. Okay. Um, I'm going to second the suggestion and I'm going to say Olympics. Archery. Yeah! <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. No. 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 She was like, there's no arrows in the Olympics. I'm like, there are. There, <laughs> there are. There are, though. So after two rounds, we are tied. Tied. Okay. The password this is. A this is a hard game. Okay. Well, you got to earn the prize. I don't know what the word is. Got it. It's hard for me to switch back and forth. Rare. <laughs> no acting. Beef? <laughs> no, it does. Especially with that face she made. <laughs> Pointy. Rare is throwing me off. Pointy. <laughs> arrow. No, right? It's not. No, it's not arrow. He answered. Oh. Wood. Oh. <laughs> you got it now. Just say something wrong. Guess something wrong. Steak. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's, 
The password is. You're starting, Nicole. Band-Aid. Almost said tampon. I was going to say hemoglobin. That's a good one. But I didn't get the chance to. The password is... Oh, okay. okay. All right. Matt, you're up. Okay. Pinocchio. <laughs> Anyone? Pinocchio. Can't go one of two ways on this. <laughs> Liar? Oh. I see what I see. Slappy. <laughs> Slappy. 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 It's goosebumps. Okay. I don't know what that is. But okay. And it's Carmilla themed the words. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> this is really. Laura? <laughs> okay, so. Pinocchio, slappy. Um, ventriloquist? Oh, good one. Puppet? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Which one? The puppet? Oh. They like talking about nightmares. Mr. Slappy. Oh. They did a puppet episode. Sock Puppets. Puppet. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was my time. Yep. Yeah. Oh. That's right. I was thinking like storyline, like oh, what Who happens gave in that, that one? Who's they share and knew the word for that one, so I should know the word for this one. Okay. The password is Who goes first? <laughs> yeah, who goes first? Um We got that. You'll point. go first, Angie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh dang. <laughs> um I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, first, Sharon said you went first last first time. time. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, you go first. No, no, no. You go first. <laughs> it's an advantage to have go first unless they get it. It's an advantage to go first? No. No, to go second. No, to go second. But that's unless we get it right here. That's right. Because if you do, you tie it up and then it all comes down to the last question. No pressure. Gabrielle. Zena? <laughs> I love Gabrielle. Uh, eat it. Yeah, that was great. That was amazing. Why? Uh, the password is. <laughs> You're winning a prize. You got to work for it. <laughs> <laughs> Messenger. It's Carmilla theme? It is. And it is your time to from Period? your time. Isn't it a messenger from your ovaries or something? <laughs> <laughs> Not this month. <laughs> <clears throat> this is for the win. Oh. <laughs> Reporter. <laughs> I was going to try to make you more nervous, but that's not fair. I think 
I know it, but I can't. It's not coming to my head. I like. Yeah. Five, five seconds. Uh, five seconds. Uh, Laura Hollis. For the win, Summers. Journalist. Just say something. We're ready for you to say something. I want to give a hint so bad, but I can't. Five seconds. Danny. Oh, she said Danny. She said Danny. Um, like anchor. What was, what was everything that was said? <laughs> Journalist. I mean, I have a guess, One. but I'm going to go with it. Okay, go with your guess. Pit correspondent. Correspondent! Yeah. 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 I'm going to anchor like news anchor. You know what I mean? Like news anchor. Not like a boat anchor. Congratulations, <laughs> Zeta. very hard. You killed that. Yeah, you killed that. How does it feel? Thank you. <laughs> Here's your prize. It's a bow and arrow set. There we go. Or anybody who wants my bow and arrow set. Thank you so much. You're yeah. welcome. Thanks for playing. All right. Uh, uh, audience question? No? Yeah, their audience. Oh, wait, we no? had one question wait. From, from Ellen. Oh, we did have a question from Ellen Simpson. She wants y'all to confirm any pit shenanigan headcanons uh, from your pit time. It wasn't a good time for Danny. No, Danny was having a fine time. <laughs> she was torturing everyone I else. I thought she was having a great time. Yeah, I think she was okay with what was happening in the pit. I thought she was the only one having a good time. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, uh, theories. Uh, none. <laughs> I feel like the pit is where we became friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because at first it was like, oh god, I got this lug with me, but then. Your, true, your, your gentle nature showed in the pit. I feel like I saw your loyalty and Mel Value's loyalty. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. We took those, we, when we did the, um, the podcast, we took, we took uh, are you just petting me? That's nice. <laughs> um, we took photos to use in the podcast and in all the photos it was like, there was this progression of like, ugh, to like him falling asleep on my shoulder and me being like, okay, that's all right. She didn't mind it. That's, I don't mind, it's fine. How can you not love Kirsch? It's true. Yeah. I mean, he's awesome. Yeah. And he's good at games, too. Oh. <laughs> can we just say that you were very underestimated by your castmates? Yeah, they were throwing me under the bus, I heard. <laughs> oh, yeah, Matt's going to lose. Matt's going to lose. But Matt won. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all thanks to I'm impressed. You did very well. <laughs> yeah, are there any audience questions? Does Mike? Come on down. Angler fish. Hi. Hey. Uh, my name is Sophia. And if I read correctly, um, Nicole has a Guinness World Record for playing dodgeball for I like do. 36 hours. I do. I did. I played. Yeah. What? And so, so I want to know if, like, what are the tips and tricks to playing dodgeball for 36 hours? And if that, uh, if those skills correlate with, um, with an Adonis hunt, how they would translate over. <laughs> Excellent question. Okay, so what are the skills and tips for playing dodgeball for 36 hours? Number one, most important, don't. <laughs> yeah, don't. Very don't bad do idea. So my friends and I decided to play dodgeball. We played dodgeball like a lot, sort of competitively, and there's a, Toronto's a big dodgeball city, which is crazy to think, but I, I played on dodgeball teams with many members of the Canadian national dodgeball team who've like traveled to other countries to play dodgeball representing Canada. Sorry, we have a national dodgeball we team? Have, yep, we do, and they're really good. Um, and uh, I also played in this all-queer dodgeball league. Anyways, lots of cool things, dodgeball. Uh, so we decided to play dodgeball and make the world record to raise money for the Stephen Lewis Foundation, which supports grassroots organizations in sub-Saharan Africa. And so we raised a bunch of money and we played for 36 hours. And it's like, it's, an, it's not fun. Don't, <laughs> don't do it. It's really, you get so tired. And Did you get to sleep? No, you couldn't sleep. Um, 
Did you wear we a diaper? We did not wear diapers. So the way it works for the world record of marathon <laughs> sports, I did not wear a diaper. Uh, you earn a five-minute break every hour, but the whole team has to break together. And there were 20 of us, and the venue where we were playing, there were only two toilets. So there's no point taking a five-minute break because not everyone can get through the bathroom at that time. So we rented a bunch of porta potties I also produced the game, so I, had, I was like renting porta potties and getting permits. Um, we rented a bunch of porta potties and we would save up our breaks so we would get like every four hours a 20-minute break, and then we would all like blaze through the washrooms at the same time. But if anyone stops to pee, you lose the record. Like, you can't stop. So you have to be on the court, on video all the time. The videotapes have to overlap when you switch tapes. There has to be an analog clock that you can't be, like, messing with so the camera can see it going. It's very complicated. And none of us drank enough water because we were afraid of breaking the record by having to pee. We did have an emergency diaper and an emergency bucket, but no one used it. Um, and it's really tiring to play all night. Everyone got very grumpy and cr like some, one of my teammates just started crying for no reason. I was like, are you okay? Why are you crying? And she was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> it was terrible. And then right after I, I came home and I was like, my, my best friend took me to brunch the morning we finished. And I like literally fell asleep sitting on a bar stool and almost fell on the floor. And then I came home and I was so hungry, I ordered like really greasy Chinese food and it gave me food poisoning. So I threw up and then I couldn't eat for two more days. So I basically hadn't eaten for four straight days. I lost 11 pounds. I was like this wise and like I looked like Mr. Burns. I was so grumpy, so grumpy. Anyway, don't do it. Then I went to a job interview and they were like, what have you been up to? And I'm like, oh, I just played dodgeball for 36 hours. And I just like... I was, and I was like mad at my teammates because they made me do all the work organizing it. And I was like, and, I, <laughs> and in this job interview, I'm like all dressed up and I'm like <laughs> foaming at the mouth. And then I leave did you and get I'm the walking, job? Oh, that was my I'm walking down the stairs out of this place and I'm like, why? What did I just do? <laughs> what happened? Because I hadn't really talked to anybody and they were the first people that really asked and caringly meant, like, how did it go? And then I just spewed venom and I was like, I, not only did I not get that job, I'll never be hired anywhere again. Like, word of this interview will spread. Anyway, I get to the bottom of the stairs, my phone rings. It's been like 30 seconds since I left. And they were like, we'd like to offer you the job. Uh, we are very happy to have you on the team. And they were like, when you talked about dodgeball, we were like, nobody would work as hard as that girl worked. We gotta get her on our team. <laughs> so in the long run, I worked for that company for years. They're like a, a small ad agency. I ended up directing a bunch of commercials for them. It was great, blah, blah, blah. But like dodgeball, don't do it. Might have a good outcome. Still don't do it, not worth it. And, and don't pee during the Adonis hunt. No, yeah, no diaper. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank you. Hi, I was wondering if each of you had a favorite um, insult for Kirsch that either Danny or Mel have said. Yeah. Um, yeah well, I like the one that didn't you, you come you came up with that one on set, right? Douche canoe. <laughs> I, like douche canoe. I love that one. Yeah. Um, did I, I called you a human protein shake at one point. I think that was my favorite. <laughs> and I like your impression of me in the Adonis Hunt where you like, you do this quick yes. little one line impression. Oh, yeah. And I was like, is that what I sound like? Yeah, probably it is. <laughs> what did you say? It was like, I, do you, anyone remember? It's like, run away, Bromeo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like all the insults. I don't know, uh, that, that to me, like, if, if there's love behind it, I say that's a great way to love. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if I have a favorite, but I like them all, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi guys. Hello. Um, I was wondering what is the best or your favorite thing you've taken away from Carmilla, like moving forward onto other projects. Favorite favorite thing we've taken from Carmilla moving forward into other projects. Yeah. Or yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Well, getting to see uh, how an incredible team can work. I know great teams are all over the place, but we got to witness one work, um, like all the people behind the scenes watching how this show in this specific format was, you know, how it unfolded and how it was received and watching, every, watching all the wheels turning and, because this, this was different than your average television show. Um, so seeing how the incredible team of uh, producers and the director and the writers and everyone, how they worked was inspiring. So that, I guess that would be the thing that I'm taking away is um, having the opportunity to watch them work so well and hopefully one day working like that myself. Yeah. 
What I was going to say um, is, uh, uh, in my writing, just um, just constantly asking the question, um, but is it gay? <laughs> Um, yes. Good answer. <laughs> um, and it and um, yeah, that's kind of like a rule that I go by uh, going forward with everything. And um, usually, it, uh, it 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 gets gay, and um, and I'm very very happy with that. Yeah, so that's, that's probably so, what I've so, taken so away. So am I. Yeah. 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 Um, I started out in theater, and I, what I really one of the things I liked about theater was that you were making something collaboratively. Like I liked the team feeling of making a play, and then I liked the immediate connection that you had with the audience. Like you would say a joke, and the audience would laugh. And I felt like when you were doing performing on stage, you're really having a live conversation with the audience. And when I moved into doing film and TV and animation, I felt like I wouldn't get that anymore. Like there's such a delay between when you when you create something, when you shoot it, and when the audience actually sees it, and then their reaction is private and at home and I don't get to share it. So I kind of felt like I was giving up one of the things I loved the most that got me into performing in the first place when I moved into doing stuff for the screen. And what I loved about this show was that the feedback from the fans was so immediate and so um, rich that I didn't, I almost felt like I was just doing theater with a longer time delay. Like I, I, I felt like stuff that we did, the fans would receive it and, and like change it and then bounce it back to us. So this show actually does feel like a two way conversation just on a slightly longer time frame than I'm used to. And I didn't know that media could feel that way. And it was like such a joy to be like, oh, like, we're making this for people and they're right there and we can meet them and hear how they feel about it and it has an effect on them. So I really value that, and I feel like that's something that I want to take forward in everything I do. Is I want to, I liked that this show had res, has respect for the for the people that consume it, and makes things with like you in mind, um, and I think that's really special. So I, I I really value that, and I'm really glad to be a part of a show that that taught me that you can still do that. Thank you. Uh, my my name's Katie. Um, my question is for Nicole. What was it like to go <clears throat> into season zero and play an entirely different side of Mel? Yeah. Like, do you think, do you think also the uh, season zero being filmed after the other stuff, you know, not in chronological order, but what was that like? What can you say about that? Thanks for asking that. I was nervous because, I think all three of us were nervous because I think we felt like we have a thing that we do in this world that we feel really comfortable in and it's a, it's a character that like, you, you could meet Annie and see hints of Perry in her. You can definitely meet Nat and see hints of Carmilla in her. I think you can meet me and see hints of Mel in me. And I feel like to play like the flip side of your character is like kind of scary because it's not, I don't get cast to play like particularly like nervous, insecure people very often. That's just not, that's just not where I go. I often feel like that on the inside, but I, it's not really what I necessarily, like, I don't know, people don't look at me and be like, oh, let's cast her as, like, the person that I was in ninth grade. Do you know what I mean? So it was a little bit, like, vulnerable to step into that world, and you sort of are, like, it's hard to know if you're doing a good job or how it's going to be received or whatever. So I think, I think we all three of us felt that way, and I think it was really nice that I think the fans were, like, really loving about that season, and... Um, yeah, I was nervous, and it was fun. It was really fun too. Like it was silly and fun, and we had a good time. And it was like hard because we shot it like in season two and season three. I have episodes episodes here and there, but I never had to do like big chunks or like multiple things back to back. Like I always had a little thing and then a break and then a thing and then a break. I felt like I was much more on the like Elise Bauman train, where it was like, oh, here's a big script, go off and learn it. And it was that was really challenging, um, but I loved it. It was so fun. Like I, I have a lot of memories of that shoot and. Uh, and how like intimate it was, and how challenging it was. So it was great. You did a great job. Yeah, thanks. you did. You pulled it off. That. Thank you. Thanks. You did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we have time for. A big thank you to all of you, and thank yes, you for thank being part you. of Camilla and talking to us. And then we just also need to shout out our friend Keeler, who allowed you to see those passwords. So thank you, Keeler. Thank you very and, much. Uh, go off and enjoy. Thanks, guys. Thank you.